Hey guys, this is it. My top 10 best games of 2013. This is the definitive list. Everybody else is wrong. If it's games not on this list, then it's not the best of 2013. I was, I was kidding with you. Obviously, this is a year that I did not own a PlayStation 3. I don't have a Wii U. Uh, you know, so games like The Last of Us or Super Mario 3D Worlds aren't gonna be on the list. Uh, Fire Emblem Awakening is probably one I've seen on a ton of lists that could make it, but I don't have a 3DS. So these are the top 10 best games of the year that I've played. Now, if you don't agree with me, you I want to see you make your own in the comments. 10, it's a little bit harder to do than you think when you get towards the end of the list. But I think I got some pretty creative ones and ones that deserve recognition. So these are the top 10 best games of 2013. Number 10. Better get the hell off my property! Some bitch! I'll shoot your ass. <laughs> Bet you forgot about this little western. I didn't though, at only $15, this title is a steal because it is a hell of a good time! Woo! Okay, yeah, so there was. Oh shit! Oh my god! That was fucking awesome! Did you see that? Oh Jesus! I just killed like a motherfucking like seven dudes in a single go. Did you just slow mo jump off? I slow mo jumped off, and you know what? I'm gonna go into this mode again here. Oh, I'm not very good at this mode with the rifle, but. I'm which is a huge surprise as I expected it to be another stinker as the previous Call of Juarez. I mean, let's face it, that one was shit. The smoke effect is terrible. Are you seeing this, Joe? Um, I'm in shock. What, what the hell's going on? However, this title returns us to the Old West. What Call of Juarez does its best. Fantastic stylistic Hollywood type gunslinging, an enjoyable story, and even some genuinely funny moments made this game a perfect homage to the spaghetti westerns that I know and love. If you never got a chance to check this one out, see if you can fit it into 2014 at some point. Okay, so far we're enjoying the fuck out of this game in case you, in case you couldn't hear. <laughs> I really want to play it now. Headshot, bitches. What the fuck? Oh, what the? Oh, shit. Hey, oh my god. Whoa. Hey. Oh, that was, see, that is awesome. That mechanic right there where you've got. Number nine. You have disturbed the regeneration process, angry Jip. I mean, Superman. Fight. Oh, 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 oh. Fatality. Excellent. Flawless victory. <laughs> Injustice, gods among us. One of the only fighting games to be released in 2013 was also one of the best, okay? Great fighting mechanics that are easy to learn, but with enough depth that they can be difficult to master. Now, this is not one of the best fighting games of our generation or, or even in the past five years, none of that. But it is one of the best ones this year. Come on, bats. Oh, fuck. Oh, damn it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Get away from me. Get away from me, Batman. I hate you. Damn! Oh, I got you now! Ah, oh, yeah! Woo! Yeah, that was close. Oh, man, that was a good match. Good match, Batman. 
It's got impressive visuals, fantastic voice acting, a wide selection of varied characters. I mean, the big dudes feel like big powerhouses. The magical heroes have some cool abilities that you play with. Ranged characters could just wreck shop from afar. I only wish that they had added some more variation to the fighters' super moves and entrances. You know, those animations, I had that concern from day one and it really needs to be improved. In any event, the constant updates, the new and interesting fighters and fresh costume DLCs have kept Injustice going. And while the story was shorter than the recent Mortal Kombat reboot, it was still a wild elsewhere's ride as we got to see one evil, maniacal Superman do some pretty fucked up shit. That's enough! We can't do this! Have you gone nuts? Lois would never want it. Just... Anyone else? Number eight. Welcome to the future. The year is 2007. Nuclear war has nearly destroyed our planet. Now, an evil presence seeks to enslave what's left of humanity. And there's only one thing that can stop it. Nobody threatens my planet. See, now this is what I'm talking about. This is the way DLC should be done, okay? Instead of adding three maps for 15, 20 bucks, or some stupid handful of new weapons for three or five dollars here and there, the developers of Far Cry 3 were allowed to go balls to the wall crazy and craft a total conversion of the original game with new assets into one hell of an 80s throwback sci-fi adventure, okay? Michael Bean leans his voice to a game that parodies and, and pays homage to the best of the 80s from everything from Terminator to every campy sci-fi ever. It's well worth its asking price. This is the type of DLC that's fresh, new, exciting, and I hope more companies follow suit. I mean, come on, this one had a ton of heart. Motorcycle, helmet, batty robots, nuclear war, synth music rocking in the background, Freaky T-Rexes, glowing T-Rexes, and cheesy action movie cliched one-liners? What the hell else could you ask for? Yes, please. Blood Dragon. This standalone title is available now. Number seven. The world in Bioshock is so beautiful, it makes you want to live there. Come on! Are you gonna throw it? Or are you taking your coffee black these days? <laughs> That's racist! That's racist! Bioshock Infinite. Now, I struggled with the placement of Bioshock Infinite on my list, okay? On one hand, it really is a, a technical and, and storytelling achievement with, with the ending, the fantastic ending. Uh, the world of Columbia is, is a sight to behold and a, and a welcome, interesting uh, concept to complement its underwater brother. And I really enjoyed it when it came out. But on the other hand, the more I think about it, the gameplay has been slightly dumbed down from the past, uh, crafted far more as a straight up shooter than ever before. A damn good shooter, with less and less emphasis on some of its RPG elements. Stuff that I really would have liked. It also has one mega story point that has been bothering me more and more, the fact that a fantastic hero character, female too, uh, like Daisy, who fights for not only equal rights amongst the blacks that are being systematically oppressed, but also just uh, a symbol for all peoples against tyranny, uh, against this madman prophet. I mean, that was great, so it feels a bit cheap. 
and odd to use and just exploit your character to suddenly become this sick, disgusting person, a turncoat who would think it's okay to murder children, justify her means. Why would they take a symbol and hero to this world's minorities and, and someone who gamers and females could look up to and, and turn her into a fucking bad guy? Well, so they can switch it up with a poorly thought out twist so you can fight the Vox Populi. You know, the very same guys that we were supposed to uh, sympathize with. And all this uh, to make this, this really creepy commentary, if you think about it, that both sides are just as bad? When it comes down to it, the only difference between Comstock and Fitzroy is how you spell them. No, no they're not. They're only that bad because the writers wrote, you know, the Vox Populi to do that. This, this whole, you know, which side would you choose thing was stupid. And that's why it came down a little bit. Why would anyone want to side with the racist assholes of Colombia and their, their fucking literal white sheets? I don't know. It felt wrong. It felt creepy. It just felt exploitative just for a stupid reason to, to fight the in-game character models of your allies. Those two complaints aside, I know I kind of shit on the game for a little while there. Um, it, those aside, the game is fantastic. The whole of its parts overcome all that. I mean, the game has so many genuine moments in it that get you to feel for it, along with some fun, uh, new fun power combinations, uh, a satisfying journey, an interesting journey by its end that it still deserves a place on this list. And I know I'm gonna get a thousand comments that says, oh, it was only like that because it's an alternate universe. No, it was only like that because it was written to do this double-sided thing so that you can fucking play the board game as the racists or the Vox Populi because they're equally as bad. No, they're not. The Vox Populi were good guys and Daisy should have been one of the best hero characters of 2013. Of course, she's not. They fucked it up. This is what needs to be done. To see the founders ain't nothing but weeds. Cut them down and they just grow back. If you want to get rid of the weed, you got to pull it up from the root. It's the only way to get... Elizabeth. Number six. Unleash! The hounds! You have mistaken our love for peace for weakness. You shall regret this. Shut your smug face up. How dare you march armies next to my cities and then say you only want peace. I'll give you peace. Apocalypse is here. Boom! Holy shit. I love strategy games, and Civilization V was among the best games of 2010. While the men of learning play with their quill pen, sire, the city's defenses remain as thin as parchment! Build city war! To war! So science! War! Science! War! Science! And now it only gets even better. The Brave New World expansion is the only way to play this game. It adds on to previous expansions and propels an already excellent 4X game into legendary status. If Civ 5 had come out with this expansion included, it would have nailed my fourth ever 10 out of 10 score. Brave New World is a new measure for turn-based empire strategy games, and I highly recommend this title to any anyone who has any love for strategy or tactics at all. Even if they think that the game not, might not be their bag, you should check it out. The recent streamlined changes have done the impossible. They've made the game more accessible to everyone without compromising too much or any of the game's depth or addictive nature. So let's check out just how powerful the XCOM unit is going up against sort of a, uh, a modern age or a rifleman unit. Boom! Ha! I didn't even take any 
damage, nobody got killed, and we just pew pew pew, just like fucking just destroyed them. They are gonna help me win this war. This one adds new civilizations to meet or play as or conquer. Uh, it adds a bunch of new units, ideologies, trade caravans on the map, numerous multiplayer improvements, which is super important, uh, better cultural victory conditions with great works and even rock bands that you could send to your enemies. All these and some fantastic game additions just enrich the experience. This is still the undisputed king of its genre. This is expansion only cements it for some time to come. If you've ever wanted to feel that just one more turn itch that I do, Civilization Brave New World has you covered. Oh, you want peace now, Washington? I don't think so. Philadelphia is mine. Number five. this year had atmosphere and tension like Metro Last Light did. I mean, players found themselves tightly gripping their freaking controllers or, or uh, leaning in to, like hell into their computer chairs throughout this entire experience. Oh fuck. Oh, 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 oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh shit! Oh I'm flying! Oh I'm not in the water! Oh my god! Put me down! Oh fuck! In addition to looking fantastic with some triple A visuals, the game had some fantastic and memorable gameplay sections for a first person shooter. This is a shining example of that genre and what it can do, and one from a company that is committed to continually improving its game in significant ways rather than the fucking yearly copy-paste updates that we get or we're used to. Critics praised it, saying it belongs in the company of a half-life, that it's a masterpiece, like, like an art film compared to a soulless blockbuster. And you know what? They're dead on. A fascinating world where you scavenge for precious ammunition, you worry about what horrors lie around every dark corner, or what sort of monstrosities stalk the surface world, and you actually get to go up there and check it out. I mean, sure, it could be a bit rough around the edges from time to time, and likes to you know, pop a titty out here and there to keep, you know, some uh, immature people interested, but even if the game had zero strippers or whores, it would be just as entertaining and fulfilling. And besides all that, it is a mature tale in this grim, dark future, in a world that you can find yourself getting lost in, forgetting that you're playing a game. It's scary when it needs to be, and it's intense the whole way through. Few first-person shooters measured up to Metro in 2013. <laughs> Number four. Our crew is scattered. We're hunted by the island's inhabitants. If I don't survive, none of us will. Now all of 
admit, I was never a huge Laura fan. Her games felt clunky, stiff, and at times, you know, boring to me personally. Though I did play them, there's no doubt about that, and there were tons of great aspects to them. A at least some of the early ones, but I had long bailed out before things started to get too stale or too bad. Um, and, and, and if there was any franchise that needed a reboot, I felt Tomb Raider was a fantastic choice. And the franchise had inspired some of the better platformers since, you know, including the excellent Uncharted series. And Square Enix Direction, with the new Laura, uh, decided to focus on showing her origin and, uh, and carefully uh, telling this very real and dangerous survival story. That engaged me. The whole journey was engaging. Even the island itself seemed to be alive, its own character with so many secrets to find and discover. I was gripped, you know, unable to put the game down, lockstep with Laura every bit of the way. I felt like I was overcoming the island right there alongside her. <laughs> Laura Croft, you are my hero! <laughs> hey, you know, Reyes actually just cracked a smile. <laughs> I can do that. When you lose yourself for a second in a game like that, you know something's being done right. Just exploring the various sections and, and locales of the island, which were varied, uh, solving puzzles, studying and examining relics, polished, fun platforming sections that I normally hate. These were all huge strengths of the game. Stuff that I didn't really like to do in some of the previous games, including the original, were here, and here they were made fun again. So I was left wanting more by the end. And they so perfectly blend in cinematic sections with actual solid gameplay, everything just felt right. I mean, if these are the types of games that some female gamers are wanting more of when they highlight the lack of strong female leads, uh, then sign me up. Laura, Elizabeth, Ellie, they're all more fleshed out than we are used to, and they were all well received in 2013. And you know what? This is not a story about just a woman. It's about a person, a human being, going through hell and back again and becoming stronger, independent, and hella capable for it. And that's why people connected with it. It's why I connected with it. You know, a new hero is born, or should I say reborn, and I cannot wait for the next one. I only hope that it did well enough for, for a sequel. And if you haven't played it, you need to. It easily makes my top five list. Yeah, I was afraid you were going to say that. Uh, you can do it, Laura. After all, you're a Croft. I don't think I'm that kind of Croft. Sure you are. You just don't know it yet. Number three. Uh, oh shit! Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's good right there. Oh shit! Oh, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> Okay, that's too funny. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Saints Row 4 was simply just a fun experience. Yes, I know that annoys some verbose critics to say all is fun, but it's fucking true. The game is a damn good time. Yes, its story is wacky as hell. It doesn't have the depth of some of the other open world games this year, but what it does have is bucket loads of charm. This is so freaking over the top, so dumb and stupid, that you can't help but like it. I mean, you're the freaking president of the United States repelling an alien invasion wherein you get superpowers in a wide open city and a virtual simulation. The premise alone should tell you what the hell you're in store for. Hey, boss! Not now, King, I'm in the zone. That's right. Let me hear your adulation. I 
I mean, it would have been incredibly easy for this game to continue the disappointment from Saint, Saints Row 3. And there were so many fears that this was simply just repackaged DLC. But I think Saints Row 4 manages to not only overcome those things, but put in some great new mechanics, like the superpowers. But it awful, uh, offers us a ton of value in its single and cooperative gameplay modes. So few games take off all their restrictions, their training wheels like this one does, and let you just literally go wild, breaking the game balance in the process, and not even care about it. Well, this one does. It's constantly making pop culture references. Come get it. Stage one, fight. Holy shit. Eat it big. It's got great visual style and voice acting, and you can tell that the game is just one huge ass party. A party where you are the center of attention. And while it doesn't have the perfect balance of wacky and seriousness, the, the fantastic customization depth, or the emotional pool from Saints Row 2, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily need to copy its older brother in that way. It goes for something completely different. It brings back fan favorite characters and just unleashes everything it has in a single volley in its current engine and just lets it all hang loose, okay? This is not a game to take seriously and it's maybe one that you have to be in the mood for, but it is in fact one of the better open world experiences of 2013, that's for sure. Don't be mad. Fuck me! Yes! Oh! Get him! Do what exactly? Huh? Bravado me to death? <laughs> I'm going to have fun breaking you. Number two. Hands aft, lads. We're taking this one home. I want a taste of the good life. An easy life. Now your courage terrifies empires. If a man plays the fool, then it's only fools he'll persuade, but appear to be the devil. And all men will submit. <sighs> Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. I am so angry that I never got a chance to do a full-blown review of this game in 2013. Just unfairly dumped among a ton of other big releases in Broketober of all months. While I was working on my new community site, I, I barely got in the playing time when it came out. But since then, I have poured myself into the game with other Joe, and we've been having a blast. Everyone knows my love from the naval combat sections in AC3. It was the best part of that game. I practically begged for a whole game like that, and I nearly effectively got it with my wish in Black Flag. This is one of the best pirate games ever in RPGs or adventure or open world games, okay? The open world is rich. The sense of discovery and exploration is fantastic. The naval battles are exciting and even improved since the last game. The open sea is now its own obstacle and, and has a character to itself, just throwing different types of storms at you, even in the heat of battle. Searching for booty has just never been this much fun. People disappointed by AC3 or the relatively boring Connor need to climb aboard with Edward Kenway, a stronger main protagonist that adds that missing element. This game not only has that great story that the previous one didn't, but its world is far more interesting to explore with a ship. Just so much so that I dare say that Assassin's Creed it just won't be the same without some sort of sh ship section now. I mean, I'd feel cheated without it, naked even. Hell, I, I sometimes dreaded going back to the land sections or what Assassin's Creed was supposed to be just to, you know, tail another asshole and be all stealthy and suck. 
yeah, I'd rather stay on my pirate ship. And you know, the other bit of good mo news is that it kind of downplayed all the abstergo elements and, you know, Desmond's gone and, you know, they kept that to a minimum. Sure, I mean, it's still there out of obligation, but, you know, they weren't shoving it in our face as much as they were before. And as soon as you set sail with your own ship and you see how huge the map is, you feel like this world is yours for taking as the Dread Pirate Roberts. It's a shame that they couldn't carry over these naval elements into the multiplayer, but I hold hope for the future. I mean, great visuals, voice acting, animations, and the cutscenes, they all come together to make this my favorite Assassin's Creed game to date. I mean, you can have your dense Marvel cities, I'll keep my pirate ship an expert skilled seaman, okay? Pun intended. Thank you very much. Stand up to hell! Number one. Sweet mother of shit. This one was a little bit predictable, wasn't it? But still, it's hard to deny how much value we got out of this $60 game on the last gen consoles. This is as triple A as triple A has come. Rockstar has done it again. You know, it could have felt disjointed or become a disaster with three different protagonists, each different from each other, with their own stories and obstacles to overcome, but it was masterfully executed. And it provided a brand new element to be able to experience things from different angles and just always have something fresh going on or to go visit uh, and another great addition was the heists every bit as good as one of the Hollywood blockbuster movies about robbing a bank and getting into a gun battle with the cops these were so much fun to plan and execute here's what I think we have two options the new security software goes into containment mode in case of emergency, you know, uh, earthquakes, mudslides, acts of God. So we could plant some firebombs. They go bang, the emergency call goes out. We hijack it, show up as firemen, and then we grab the containment drive. Or we could hack the system on site. We'll go in by, uh, by air. Uh, hope we don't run into too much physical resistance. Sounds relaxing. Either bombing our office ran by a division of corrupt government psychos or defeating one of the world's most complex security systems using our worthless ass ninja skills, huh? Yeah, any, many, money, mo. Here's how you break it down. The voice acting was superb. The missions had good variety. The graphics and cinematics make Grand Theft Auto look more realistic than it's ever been in this massive open world. And all this in an interesting story filled with great side quests it would be an achievement on its own, topping the list even. But it goes further than that by adding Grand Theft Auto Online. Yes, it was a disaster at launch. Yes, the hacks and cheaters are a huge issue. And yes, it's taking forever uh, for them to release the promised content like the fucking heists. But it was a unique and impressive feat. And when everything is working, it's great, especially if you've had the pleasure of running around with a full crew of your most trusted homies. Grand Theft Auto V is a masterpiece, and in my opinion, simply the best game of 2013. 
So if you disagree with that list or you have your own, leave it in the comments so I can check it out. Maybe check out some of the other games that I should have put on there. And I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye.